Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Lezipina Pai. I'm the college librarian, um, and I'm also responsible for other humanities subject areas like history, information science, and political science. Uh, this morning, I'm going to take you through um, uh, how you're going to access the library material and um, with COVID-19 um, since last year, we actually encourage our students to, to be online most of the time. Um, <clears throat> this will be my overview. I'm basically going to uh, take you through some general library information, especially uh, some of your new, the new ones and I'm going to emphasize um, how important your MyUNISA password and your My Life email account it is to, to the university. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can, <coughs> excuse me, how you can find your, your e-reserves uh, or your recommended books, the ones that you find on your TAT 101s, and how you're going to use the catalog, especially how you're going to search for e-books. Uh, you know now that you know you can rely a lot of on on online material like your your, your articles and your ebooks because the library um, it was open for now under lockdown one, but now there's a shutdown because of uh, uh, the, the, the 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 access uh, strikes. So you can use the catalog to to check whether there are any ebooks that you can use for your assignments or for your research projects. And I'm going to show you how to use uh, some of the subject databases. And these you can find on your library guides. And I'm sure most of you are not registered. Uh, you, you, you are registered as UNISA students, but you come from different uh, colleges. So I'm going to show you where to find your your, your, your personal librarians um, on different uh, library guides. And, um, and then how, when you find a source that doesn't have a PDF or a full text on it, how are you going to search uh, those online journals? I will touch a little bit on your referencing, but we're going to do that in the second part of our training somewhere in, I think it's, 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 it's April. So I would move on to say, um, generally, uh, all your honors, all the honor students can borrow about 16 print books from the library. And if you are a resident in South Africa, you can keep those those books for 42 days. And those who are outside South Africa can keep them for about three months, you know, because we have students across the borders, you know, people who are from Zimbabwe, Swatini, Botswana and some overseas uh, students. So those can keep those books for three months. But remember then that at any point, the library can recall a book that you have just uh, borrowed because we have more than uh, about 400,000 students. So if you have a book with you, don't uh, keep it for long. If the library recalls it, it will give you seven days to return it. If you don't, you're going to incur fines. So currently, um, if we find students and we per day, we, you know, it escalates to it's a five rent per day, and then it can accumulate and be such this big amount of 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 money that you owe for not returning the book on time. So. If that account is not paid, there's a possibility that you will not get your results. You will not be allowed to re-register because the whole entire library system and the university, the university system talks to one another. So if you have a book issued in your name and it's with you and get a, an email or a, a, an SMS to say, please return the book, make sure that that book within seven days of the allocated time is retained. Um, 
your requests for print books should be done online. Uh, we don't have a, 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 another way of requesting. You will see when we do a live demo, I'll show you how you request the print books. And um, with ebooks, there's no need for you to request ebooks because ebooks are hosted by publishers and you can just go to the publisher's homepage. You register an account, you keep a file, uh, you know, you, you, you personalize uh, your, your, your choices of books, you keep them there or you can download them and have a folder somewhere where you have either downloaded the full text or you have downloaded some parts of the book but the print books you can only request them online and if you want to make a follow-up on your queries you know last year we had so many challenges because of COVID-19 so you can always send an email to library inquiries to check what uh, where is your request you know what kind of did the library receive your request? How far is the process? Has the book been sent to your post office? Or, you know, now, now recently we are we, we sent books by courier to different um, locations. So you'll see when you request online, there's a tab where you have to give the, the library some instructions. If you are within Gauteng, let's say Johannesburg or Pretoria, we have different branches also in the country. You can just, you know, give us instructions to say, please send this particular book at such and such a branch. When we go to the library's uh, homepage, I'll show you where you can uh, locate the branches that uh, UNISA have, because we we, we have a, a, we, we we send books to a certain location, then you can fetch them there. It's all, it all depends um, on your preference and some people want books couriered to them. We also do that. Um, and you can also renew those books that you have, uh, you're still busy with. On the library system, there's a login button where you have to log in with your MyUNISA password and your, your student number. And then you can renew those books that you're still busy with and you're not done with so you can also renew them online but um, if you find that on that uh, renewal page it says to you you cannot renew this usually what happens with the renewals if you go online and renew a book it will renew it only twice it doesn't allow for a third renewal you will see it will tell you that this one cannot be renewed it has to be returned back because the third renewal, the library thinks, no, 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 this is too much now. This book might be missing or you just don't have the book with you. So we want to make sure that the book is returned. You can return it and borrow it at the same time. But we want the physical book to come back first before you can renew it because the renewals happens only twice. And there's, there, these are the numbers that you can call. <coughs> Excuse me. And unfortunately, we're telephoning these numbers because of the skeleton stuff that is, is in the library and with these shutdowns. Uh, currently, there's no one that you can call. As soon as things go back to normal, you can call because there are colleagues that are working. We, we, we rotate. So there's a rotational uh, uh, roster you might find that there's someone who's going to answer but when you call and there's no answer you must know that there's no one at those numbers like i said i'm a personal librarian for the college <coughs> excuse me can i just sip the water, water yes feel free Ms. <coughs> so as I said, I'm a personal librarian for the college and some other subject areas. I have colleagues who are also, the, we are a team of about 17 librarians. So all of you, you have someone assigned to you to help you um, with your uh, research needs, 
to train you on a one on one or in a group like this one. We are basically your contact uh, with the university. So you have you each have a librarian. When we go live, I'll show you where to find your specific uh, personal librarian in some universities. They are called, we are called subject librarians because we deal with specific subject areas. So we are your main contact persons uh, in the library. So if you are about to write your research report, you're free to contact your subject librarian to help you with your uh, research material, uh, help you with your uh, literature and searches, or you can contact, uh, there's another group in the library, they are called the search librarians, who will compile a, a literature list for you on your specific topic. Uh, the turnaround time, it might be a little bit longer than when you contact your personal librarian. But the ideal here is to uh, empower you to do things on your own so that you can get going instead of you waiting for someone else to, to do a search for you. So you have to empower yourself, use these things. You are registered here. So everything that is available from the library resources, it's meant for all of you. Nothing, you, have, you don't have to pay for anything. Everything is free. But there are these two units. I belong to personal librarians. We, we, we are in touch with all the postgraduate students. OK, so this is the main UNISA Libraries homepage. And I'm sure you are all familiar with this. What I want to um, show you here is where you find the library. So on this gray bar, I don't know whether you can see my pointer. There's your library link. But if you want to go to your MyUNISA stuff, you will go to uh, MyUNISA, this one circled here. And just take note that the, the MyUNISA and the library pages are two different softwares. MyUNISA is the university's teaching portal and we don't have control of what we don't have control of what is on my UNISA. We as librarians only deal with the library staff. So if you want to access the library, you have to use the library's link. Don't access the my UNISA page, the, the UNISA library page via your my UNISA because the two systems are not compatible. You might find challenges. Although we have on the My UNISA page, some of the links to the library. They work at some point, at some point they don't work. So the two are two separate things. So if you are registered at UNISA, what you have to do first of all is to go to the My UNISA page and claim your My UNISA password. So this password that you're going to claim on the My UNISA, this will be your access password to all the library's online resources. Without that, you will never be able to use any of our resources. You won't be able to open all our full text documents. You won't be able to open your e-reserves, you know, using your course code to check what is recommended for your, for your particular module. You will not be able to request any of our material. You will not be able to renew any of the books that we're going to be sending to you. So as soon as you are registered with us, you go to the MyUNISA website, you claim for, you know, you, you, you go and create um, the, the password. The password that you use on MyUNISA will give you access to everything that is available in the library. And this particular um, password um, will also allow you to uh, claim the My Life email account. So the university will give you a space where you can use your student number so that you can claim your My Life email account. 
And every time you communicate with either the library, your, your lecturers, you have to use that email account. Because I know most of the students, they prefer their Gmail account. In some instances, not always, it depends what kind of a Gmail account you're using. Some of them just go to our junk mail. And then students start complaining that UNISA doesn't respond to their queries. You know, I've been sending emails to my lecturer. I've sent an email to the library. I don't get any response. It's because the official communication with the university should be via your My Life email account. That's what is recognized. And last year, towards the end of the year, there was a general communication that students should not communicate with the university using all their private email accounts. And if you prefer to use your private email, you should uh, uh, ask the Mayunisa people to help you to link your private email to that one, or that, to the to the Mayunisa one, to, my, to the My Life email account. It's possible. We as the library will never be able to help you with that. You have to contact the My Unisa people to, to help you with that. Right. You saw previously where I showed the link from the main university page to the library. So this is the library's home page. Some of you who've used it before might be familiar with it. Um, I just want to point to you that on my left hand side, there's what we call the branch locator. When we do the live, I'll, I'll quickly show you how many branches are out there so that when you request books, you can always um, use the branch to go and fetch them from there. Or when you want to return them to the university, you can send them to the branch, then you don't have to pay for anything. But if you put them in the post office, then you have to pay. So if we send you books, there's no fee that you, you incur. But when you return the books to us, if you put them in a courier, it's, it's on you. If you send them to the branch, then you don't have to pay because that's the UNISA branch. And on this page, there's also what we call um, the research support page. I'll quickly go to that when we go online to show you. Uh, the names of the personal librarians that are responsible for all the under, I mean, the postgraduate students. There's a list of them. You can go and check under the research support on this link here to see who is responsible to help you. And again, on the right hand side here, there's a login to my library. So you can go and log into the your my library and you can check and see remember sometimes you go to the catalog you, you, you search for a title of a book you requested you can either use the login to my library to check whether this book has already been issued to your name and then you'll see the names of the book you know you'll have a list your profile will appear where you see that I've got only these three books issued under my name. If you want to renew them, you can just, there's a tick, tick, you tick, or you can just say renew on. Remember again that you can't renew them more than twice. And on the same right hand side here, there's a link to all the library guides. Um, we as personal librarians have spe specific subject guides. So each one of you will have a guide and on the same page of the guide there's a name of a librarian that is responsible for that particular subject area if you want to ask any questions there's an email if you prefer to call them there's a phone there that you can call we all are linked to um, uh, our phones are linked to our laptops we're working from home you will be able to get access to them or you can just drop them an email and on this page as well, you can go and find your e-reserves and your recommended book, books using your own specific course code that is on your TAT 101, depending on what you registered for. In some areas, in some subject areas, 
there are no uh, recommended books uh, prescribed. You have to do the searching yourself, like in, in, in information science, for instance. And in some areas, the academics are putting specific books that you must contact, consult, and some specific articles. These are online articles. When you click on them, it asks for your student number and then your mind is a password, then you get to the full text of the article. I'll show you how to do that when we go live. Right, when you click on that library guides link from the main UNISA library page, you get a page where it gives you an alphabetical list of all the subjects that are taught at UNISA. So if you are registered for history, obviously you'll go for history. If it's communication, you'll go under C, it's an alphabetical list, but I'm just showcasing here the information science um, a library guide because I'm responsible for information science. But any subject area that you are registered in will appear under this alphabetical list. Then you go and click on your own subject area that you registered in psychology, education, whatever. You click on that and then you land on a on a page like this one. Most of these guides, all of them, of course, they are the same. On the landing page, that's where you'll find the name of the subject person that deals with this particular subject area. There's my name. If you are in information science, if you want to communicate with me, you'll send me, you just click on the link for email, you drop me an email, you tell me what you are looking for or you can phone at this number. All the personal librarians have this guide. And what is on this guide is that we have duplicated the entire library page. So everything that you see on the library page that you want to search on, you will find here. So you can go to the library homepage from this, this guide, or you can use the, the, the library's homepage. But, um, the, 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 the library guide, we actually want to put things in one page because the main UNISA library page is a little bit, you know, everything is everywhere. So here we tried to group things together on a specific subject area. You will see that we have tabs at the, to at the top there. If you want to look for books, you can search the catalog from here or you can just click on books. What is nice with this, when you click on the book pair tab, it gives you an option where you can go and say now, because the library is closed, I don't, I don't have access to print books. You know, I don't want to, to request print books because it takes so long for them to be delivered at my post office. It's, you know, it's a tedious uh, process. I don't want to search for print books. So we've plot databases on the specific subject area on information science. And you'll see in all subject areas, you'll have databases for eBooks where you can go and search, pair your specific topic for online books on a specific topic. You will see that um, each and every subject area has its own list of eBook packages where you can just go and go to the director of open access books or you go to IGI eBooks for library and information science where you can just pick up titles of books that you know speak to what you are researching on. So this is helpful. Or if you prefer to search from the library's catalog, you use this tab here to search. And then when you get to the catalog, because we have linked some of the eBooks that we are buying on the catalog, you will find both print and e. You can limit that to only e-books e instead of you searching here. Right, from the main uh, library's homepage, when you click to search the library catalog, it opens, it opens here. The default will be on the title. We assume you want to search a title of the book that is in front of you. Then you can search for it and then you can determine whether this book is in or out, then you can request it. In this instance, you can also search for advanced keywords 
You can search for simple keywords like research methods or methodology, or you can go and search research methods or any other topic under the subject area. Or you can even search if you have a TAT 101 under the course code, you don't have, um, you have uh, uh, recommended readings, you can search them under your course code. So it allows you to search under course code, the subject of your interest, the keyword, you can even search according to the author. If you know that this author has written this book, you can also search the author. If you're not sure, you can combine the author with the title. It allows for the first name of the author, you forgot the initial of the author, you can search some of the words in the title. It allows for that. So what I want to show you is now, how are you going to search under the course code? Remember, you can come here because we've got different search options and just click on the course code, which opens something like this. If you know your course code, you just key in your course code and submit. Then you get this. So this particular course code is listing all the recommended books for 2020 and 2021. So we only keep the previous year and the current year. So next year, when you search again on the same course code, you'll get the list for 2021 and 2022. And um, this allows for people who are doing the aggregate or who are writing in January so that they don't miss out. If you were writing in January, you still have your list for 2020 that you can still contact consult. So and then you will just these electronic reserves, these are general articles that are placed on the library's home uh, homepage. These are your online articles that you must uh, 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 use for your for your as your particular assignment. Not all of them, not all the all of the subject areas have such things. Some of these you have to do yourself. It's just a topic that you must research and then you go and find these things yourself. So if you click uh, on this, let's say, electronic reserves for 2021 for students who have registered for this particular module, you find a list like this. In some instances, it's a long list of, of all the articles. When you click on the first article that is reserved for you, you get to a page, a full page like this one, where it will give you the name of the author of that particular article and the title of the article. And it says here, this electronic resource. So you have to click because some of the students, they just go and click here. This will take you to this particular general title. You have to click connect to this electronic resource because this is what you need. You need this online article. When you click on it, it takes you directly to the publisher of the article and it gives you a PDF. You can either download this PDF document or you can just download, uh, you can copy the link and put it somewhere and come back and read the article online. But I know most students prefer to just download this and plug it on their desktop or you open a folder for a particular module or a course code and then you just plug all the articles that you have downloaded for this particular um, module or course code. Then you know you've got these articles, then you can just go and read them online as you wish. So this is how you go and search for your reserved uh, e-reserves under the course codes and also your recommended book. If the list that we just had were books, you will just click on the title of the book and then it will tell you whether the book is available or it was taken out then you go ahead and request it if it's a if it's a print book. Okay, we're going back to the catalog. I just want to uh, demonstrate to you. Remember on the previous page, the default on the catalog, it's just the title. We assume you know what you're looking for. You can just start searching under the title of a book. You can search for keywords, you can search for subject areas. And the default, you have to change it here. You can change this by just putting keyword. And I've just made an example of this COVID-19 searching. 
you can search the entire collection. The entire collection uh, means you, you will find anything related to COVID-19 in print books, in thesis, because we document our own thesis and dissertations in e-books. So it will be a mixture of things. And the, the material that you're going to get from such a search is going to be broad. And then you can also pick up books that are placed in some of our branches. So it will be a mixture of things. But in this day when you don't want to uh, go around in circles, you can change this option instead of viewing the entire collection, you know, anything that we have as far as this COVID-19 is concerned under the keyword search. And your keyword search, it's just a broad uh, search. Your words will be anywhere. They, won't, they will appear in the title. They sometimes appear in your subject area or in the abstract. So this is a broad search. But if you want to just, you know, be focused and say, you know, I don't have time. My assignment is due. I just need one or two books or three books, e-books on this particular topic. You can change this option to say, you know, I don't want to search the entire collection. I only need to search only e-books. Then you change this entire collection, this drop down menu here under ebooks. And then you recognize the ebooks by having this. When you search the entire collection, you'll see on the previous page, some of these don't have any. These are still books that are still on order, and some of them haven't arrived yet. But you recognize an ebook by having that E, red E on it. So now you know that I've got a list of ebooks that I can quickly consult and then you know continue with my assignment instead of requesting a print book which will take another three four five weeks to get to my destination so you have your ebook like this if you prefer to go because here you can directly go to the website but i would before you even go there to save you the trouble of going online it's it's a long process um, and some of you have you using your own data and uh, you better now open the title first and just engage with the title of a book and the abstract and just see do is this is this is this worthy going to the publisher's page because before you jump to go and look at the publisher's page for this particular title just go and read the abstract and in some instances the book will have the table of contents so you can just go and see what's in this book. Will I get a chapter that will answer my question before you go directly to the website of the book? So click on the title, go through um, the abstract and look at the subject area and see this book is on crisis management and leadership of epidemics. So if this is what you are really looking for, then you go and open the book. It says here, view the full text ebook which is hosted by EBSCO host, and then access is restricted to UNISA staff and students. When you click on this link, it's going to ask for your credentials because this is not open for any person. This is meant for UNISA staff and their student and the students. So here, this is where I say your my UNISA password is crucial. Your username here is going to be your student number and then your my UNISA password. Without your my UNISA password, you won't have access to these online material from the library. So you just go and put in your student number, your password, and you log in, and then it takes you directly to EBSCO where this book is being hosted. The library does not keep eBooks. We just have links to the publisher's pages. So this is the publisher, EBSCO, is hosting this book. So when you get to this title of a book, there's your first book that you wanted to look at. There's your PDF document. And remember, eBooks, you can't download the entire book. Otherwise, publishers will go bankrupt. What you can do you can register with each and every one of these publishers where you go in. It's free of charge. You just go and open your personal account 
you can have a folder on EBSCO and put all your ebooks there. Then when you open, you know your ebooks are there. If you go and download an ebook from EBSCO, it will allow it won't allow you until you have opened sort of a, a free account so that you can have access. And those these books don't stay long. If you download it today, it might be gone tomorrow. They don't because it's this is an open, it's it's for everybody. So UNISA is an open distance learning. If somebody comes and look for this book and you've downloaded it two days ago, EBSCO will give it to that other person. So what 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 am, am I saying here is that you can rather maybe go and download a permanent link. If you go down here, there is what we call a permanent link and then you just download this link. This is the permanent link for this particular title. At the bottom of this uh, page, you have the table of content and it's 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 not usual that you would want the entire you would want to use the entire book. In most cases, when you look at ebooks, you would like to use one or two chapters in a book. So this is possible. So you can open any of the chapters from the table of contents. You just click on it on a on a on a, on a chapter of your choice and then it opens up. You can either now you know you can export this chapter somewhere or you can email you know specific pages of this particular book or you can save it on on your flash drive or anywhere where you want to save it or you can just uh, get a permanent link also for this particular chapter and put it somewhere so that when you click on that link it gives you the specific chapter and you can go again and look at the, the other chapter that you need there's your sign in if you click on that sign in where you personalize this particular page and put all your stuff that is E so that you can always uh, go back and have a look. And when you sign in on these things, any publisher, you must use your My Unisa credentials. You use your student number and uh, no, 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 you can sign in, you create your own password. So you can say for, for this particular but you must use your My Life email account. Remember, these are subscribe databases. You need to pay so that you can have access to this. So you must use your My Unisa My Life email account, and then you can maybe uh, you know um, you go and create the account using your own password. But you must log in with your My Unisa credentials. The password can be different from that one from my UNISA, but you must use the My Life email, you know, your username and uh, whatever you use. But it, it, when you start creating an account, it will give you all the, the requirements, what they want, what they don't want. Then you have your EBSCO books, your ebooks of EBSCO place somewhere. Or you can just download a chapter and forget about um, logging in or creating an account. Back to the catalog. On the catalog, you can search for anything. Remember, said you can do use the keyword. You can also use the author if you know who the author of the book is and the initial. You can just say to the system, I am actually interested in any in anything on research methods or methodology. And then the library, I mean the system will give you all the titles of books that have research and methods. Then you can go and decide I want this one and you can even say you can use that as a keyword or a title or a subject and you say I'm not interested in print. I don't have time, so my time is limited. I only want to see what kind of ebooks do you have under research methods and then you change this from entire to E and then it gives you all the ebooks that we have on research methods. you and you say no 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 uh, I don't want uh, only ebooks uh, I live in Sunnyside in Pretoria I can walk to um, Sunnyside library or up or uh, on, on, on the main campus I reside in Pretoria I, um, I want to go and study in the library I want print books you can just say just give me titles with research methods the entire collection Maybe some of these books are available in a branch near me. I'll go there and use them there or I can go and borrow them from there. So it's up to you. That is why I say if you start doing this, 
make sure that you contact your librarian to guide you on how to work this. I know for the first time it's a little bit overwhelming, but you know, the more you use it, the better. Okay, so once you've, you've done your, your, your title, let's, you, you've moved from um, that you want to look at the entire collection of um, type books with the title research methods in it, I've opened this one and then it gave me a list of books and then I've just selected one. Here's your request button. On each and every search that you do for print books, you will have a request button. So this is your request button. You can just click here and then you request and then you'll have a, a line that says give the library some instructions. Some students who are residing in, in next to any of the branches, you can say send my books to this following branch. I'll collect them there. Some will say send me an email. I'm just around the corner. I'll come and fetch from the main library or from Sunnyside, from uh, people from Joburg will say I will, I will collect from Florida Library. So you just tell us what is your preference so that people who are going to send this book will get that kind of a message. All right. Any questions about maybe if you have any questions as book as far as book searches and your your e reserves are concerned using your course code. Please put those questions on the question and answer, then we'll discuss them after this presentation. Because after this, I'm going to go live and repeat what I've done. OK, so now we are back to that alphabetical list of all the library guides. I've chosen the information science one because I'm, 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 a, I'm a librarian for information science uh, as well. We looked at the books and your e-reserves. Now we're going to look for articles which are key to some of you who are now going to write these papers besides your e-books where you can go and uh, download chapters and start reading. And uh, I must just warn you, when you do download the chapters of the books, please be aware of the 10% uh, copyright um, issue. Don't go and download uh, if a book has got about for five chapters, you go and download five at a time. You don't, it, the system will block you. And you, you would have um, logged in with your MyUNISA um, credentials so the, the, the university will know who you are. It's against the law. If you get an ebook and you have different chapters, rather um, copy that permanent link. You can always go in and look at one chapter and go to the second chapter, to the third chapter, make notes. And when you do that, make sure that you reference properly. Don't download a chapter of a book. Don't download a chapter of a book and forget if it, that it was a chapter from a book. And then you come later on and you say, um, this is an article. It's two different things. They are not the same. When you download a chapter of a book from an ebook, reference it properly. And all the library guides have a referencing uh, information from all subject areas. So we're going to move on now because I want to show you how you're going to get to journal articles. On each and every library guide. There's a tab like this one. It says articles. When you open it, it gives you this kind of information. All of them are the same. What the librarians have done, they've placed some of their online, you know, journals. If you want to go and browse and see if some of your, 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 your questions can be answered by this, you are welcome. But these are the subject databases that I want you to take note of you are going to be able now to search from across certain databases to see if you can get um, your topic, your research topic answered. So we're going to open the first one. It's called Academic Search Premium. When you get used to this, you'll be able to pick them up from the e-resource list and you just go under the A to Z list and go for A and then you choose this one. So you click on Academic Search Premium 
and it takes you to a page, you know, it's a search page, but before you even do anything, I would like you to go and say, I want to choose databases because Academic Search Premier is part of a list of other databases. So from this list, it's, a, it's an alphabetical list, it's a long list, I've just captured, you know, half the part, depending on what you are registered for, you have to go and find your own subject area. It's, it's multidisciplinary, it's got all uh, subject area. If you are in psychology, you'll go for all of these APA, psych, info stuff. You are in religion, there's, there's ATLA for religion, there's social sciences, there's education. It, there's a lot of subject area. Depending on your subject area, you go and select more because you are able now to search across databases. You don't choose only one, there's more. Then you say, I'm okay with that. You've made your selection. In this instance, I'm, I'm searching for COVID-19 in Africa, but I've gone through all these databases. I've selected the names. So I've, I've, I've indicated to you that you can search across uh, databases. You go choose databases, you make your selection. Before you even put your, your search words here, you go and limit your search here at the bottom. So these are my limiters. I've got a phrase COVID-19 in Africa and I've put it in quotes because I want these words to appear next to each other. I could have said COVID-19 and put Africa here and Africa. It would have still done the trick. So if you search a phrase, it means you want COVID-19 in Africa to appear next to one another. You see the first hit here, it's COVID-19 in Africa. So the two words next to one another. That's why I have put a phrase, a, a, a quotes. So, and I've limited this and set at the bottom of my search screen, you can go and say, I'm only interested in scholarly peer reviewed journals. I don't want uh, magazines or newspaper things or dippings of some sort. I only want scholarly peer review journals to appear in my list. And then I've said, I'm only interested in 2019 to 2021. So this list is composed of references from 2019 to 2021, because this is the current topic. And I have about 94 items on this list. So I started this as a keyword search. There was a lot of items and I said, no, 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 no. I actually want these terms to appear in the title of my article. So I want the exact information I want the terms that I've put in here to appear only in the title of my article. So this was about a thousand and something, then it was reduced to 94. So I've changed this to title and then uh, conducted the search again. So this is my result. What do I do now with this list? So most of these articles are in full text. They come with a PDF full text document, but you can't just go and download each PDF. So here, unlike with the ebooks, these are freely available. You've paid the license. If you wish, you can download all 94 PDF documents. I know that this is not uh, the case. So you will go and select the ones that you want and download as, as, as you wish. So on this page, if you want to look at the abstract, there's an hour class here, but there's also a summary of an abstract here. It will sort of briefly tell you what this article is all about. But if you want to look at the whole abstract, you will, will open this hour class. I'll show you when we go live. Then you have a sort of a sense what this whole article is all about. It also has subject coverings here. This particular article is, a, is on COVID-19 pandemic. So if you are working on that, you know this is the right article for you. On the next page, I'm showing you that uh, you can now, once you've decided on this, 
the default here of the search results is about 20 pages, but at your level, you don't want to go through 100 pages. So you can go and there there's a page options. You can tell the system, just give me the first 50. And most of these articles are ranked according to relevancy. So you know your top articles are the most relevant ones. So rather have the first 50 at the top which are relevant and you go through them. So you change your, your search option here under 50. Now I'm browsing from one to 50. Then I'm selecting from that list. How do you now select? You have a folder which is this plus sign on your search prompt. If you start clicking on the search uh, on this article, let's say I'm interested in this one. If I click on it, it changes to like an envelope. It puts that in a folder. So out of the 50, I can have about 20 selected, putting them in a folder. And as soon as I'm done with my selecting, I can now go at the top there. There's a folder which you can open. It doesn't show on this uh, slide, but there is your folder view also on your right hand side. So you can click there to view now what is it that you've selected. Why do you have to put them on the folder? It's time consuming for you to download per article. So rather put them in the folder and go and open that folder. When you open the folder, you can now email the folder, everything that is in that particular folder to your email address, to your My Life email account, or you can export them if you have um, an account with one of the reference management tools, or you can save them on your Stiffy drive, on your hard drive, wherever you want to save them to. But, but the best is to send them to your, to your email. You just open your folder. It gives you all the ones that you've selected. And then you just click on email. And then this, this is what you get. Please don't say this comes from yourself. Leave this email from, it comes from EBSCO. It doesn't come from you because some students make a, a mistake to say from me to from me to myself, it doesn't work like that. Leave this option like it comes as a default. Just complete this one. Give it a name. You can say articles or COVID-19 articles. You can leave the PDF tick because automatically, even if you leave it ticked, it will come with that PDF document. But I don't want to get, you know, a long list of PDF documents, so I just um, deselect this, I will get a link which will give me a PDF document and then you just click on send. Then it says it confirms that this particular email it has been sent to you. Or you can just go, if you go back there, you can say, OK, I want to see first how the PDF looks like. Then it opens on the publisher's home page. It opens on the EBSCO host, which hosts this particular uh, article. It's a 15 page article. You can either download the PDF from here, which I said it's a time consuming thing to do all of this one by one. The best is to put them in a folder and download uh, them as you or read them once they are in your folder or in your email. You go to the PDF or you can just download this particular article. Let's say you want one or two. You, you can do that. You can just uh, open the PDF, download it to wherever you want to download the full article. It's a 15 page article. Okay. How then do you now, let's say you find in your tutorial letter, you find a, an article with the reference, you know, just the name of the author, the article and the general title, and you don't know whether this is online or not. On your library's homepage, there's what we call find e-journals and e-books. This is a portal that you can just plug in the title of a journal and then it will just tell you whether this particular journal is available somewhere as an online journal where you can find all these PDFs. Or you can go to your library guide under the article tab at the bottom list. There is this prompt where you can search for, for that. 
So remember, we just looked at academic search premier. We went to EBSCO and selected a few databases. We did our search. We were happy with our results. But in some of these instances, you'll come up with a title of a journal, which is not, you know, a reference that doesn't have a PDF. What do you then do? And if you say you, re you are very interested in this particular article, you just go and use your find e-journals at the bottom of the subject databases list on the guide. And then you just plug in your title of a journal there. It opens up on this portal. This is a portal where it tells us, the UNISA community, whether a particular title of a journal, we have it as an online journal. So if your results is zero here, then you know this particular journal is not available as an online journal. So this one, it's a journal of academic librarianship. Um, you know, I'm a librarian, so I'm interested in this particular journal. And then it gives me all the back dates and the current dates. Because I'm interested in the current one, I'll go and click on this. This is the publisher that is hosting this particular journal title as an online journal. Then I click on it, it takes me directly to the publisher. In your, in your case, it will probably say to you, please log in. It gives you that login uh, authentication a prompt where you have to put your student number and your MyUNISA password to be able to get here because it just wants to make sure that are you a legit UNISA student to get to, to this page. It takes you directly to the publisher's page of that particular journal. You can either browse under the latest issues and see if your, your article will appear there or if there's anything interesting that you can use for your assignment or you can just view all the other issues and go back as far as you want. If I, I go for my latest issue, which was 2020 um, March, it will give me also again a table of contents and here you can download as many articles as you want. With, with, with articles is different from ebooks. Ebooks are restricted. You can't just go to a table of content of an ebook and download all the, 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 the article as a whole or the ebook entire, entirely. So this one you can just go. I'm interested in university copyright. I can go and just download this article. Here like this, here's my download PDF. It allows me to download or I can read it here or copy the link and put it somewhere so that I can come back to this one. Right, back to your library guide. All of you have one. There's a tab. Remember, we looked at books. We look at um, how to search for course codes, getting your recommended books and your uh, e-reserves, your, your reserved articles. We also have what we call and we look at articles and now we have referencing. This will cover in the in the next in the next training. But make sure that when you stick to Harvard, be consistent. Don't use Harvard Augmented and use Harvard Advanced or whatever other Harvard second or third or whatever edition. Stick to one format of, of referencing. In most of these um, library guides, we've put all the citation guidelines here with the information science students we have a reference, a PDF, and I know in education they have one, and in health studies, and I think in, in psychology they use API. So these are the styles. Once you choose a style, stick to one style. So when we do this next time, I'll show you how you can put all your references into any of these reference management tools so that you have all your referencing things in one place. Lastly, I just want to emphasize your, your research support page, which we'll also cover uh, extensively in our, in our next uh, training, where I will show you how you now going to look at your uh, methodology uh, references. In each and every one of the guides, we have these are books, these are print books. When you click on any of these, these are print books for information science students on research methods. 
So if my the students for who are registered for information science come to this page, it's a long list. They've got all their print books here, but the library has also um, created uh, sort of an, a, a feed on on ebooks on 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 research methodology, just generic uh, books on research methods. How do you write your research proposal? Academic writing books. These are actually ebooks. So if you start with your research paper and you want to look at these, you are welcome to click on any of these. It will give you a list of things that you 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 can you know use. And I think I'm going to end here and go live. Remember I said when you come through to the library, don't use the library via your MyUNISA page. Rather use the library by clicking on this page, on this link, library, and then it will take you here. What I want to show you here is the names of your specific subject library, although you're going to find them under library guides. There's this link called research support. Under the research support, you can go to personal librarian, where you're now going to look at who's responsible for what subject area. If you, for instance, click here, you will see in education, there are two people. If you fall under any of this, there's an email address, there's an email address, there's a telephone number for this particular one. If you go for human sciences, it's different departments and institutes that fall under certain people. So you'll find your list here under the research support. If you go under branch locator, then you also see, you know, where are the branches of UNISA in different provinces. So in Deben, these are the addresses and uh, and the telephone numbers is London, Ekuruleni, you know, uh, Jobek and 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 and. OK, so back to the library's home page. I actually wanted to demonstrate to you um, for those of you who have recommended readings and recommended um, articles. This is the link where you can, we can you can use where you go and search under the, the course code or you can go under search options um, and search under the course code. And then you just put in your course code like this one is a political science one. And then these are recommended books for this particular module and these are your e-reserves. Any of this are freely available. So you just go and click on the title of what is recommended article for yourself. And the system, of course, will want to know who you are. You use your MyUNISA, your, your, your student number and your MyUNISA um, password to, to authenticate and you log in. It takes you, because you've now logged in, it takes you directly to the PDF document of this particular article. This is a 17 page article. You can either read it online or you can download it. OK, so any of these uh, e-reserves where you search according to your course code, they are freely available. You can download them all at once and keep them for your assignment. Hello. <coughs> Morning, how are you? Right, and you can go and search for a keyword. Let me go back to the library's homepage. So we've looked at the research support where you'll find your, your librarians and your branch locator. And I've just briefly indicated to you that you can search for your, for your recommended readings, whether they are recommended books or whether they are articles. In some modules, they only recommend books and in some modules like this one that we've just looked at, they just have a uh, reserves for that particular for that particular module, not not any title of book. 
let's say you want to to search for for ebooks so you click on search the catalog and then the default here we assume you know what you're looking for so i can say to the system i'm just looking for information books that cover research methods you know where there's a title that covers research method but with COVID, um i might say you know i don't have time for e for, for print books i don't have time to wait for a book to be sent to me it's a slow process i rather change this entire collection to ebooks i just want to see what does unisa have as far as ebooks are concerned in this particular uh, topic and then i just go and search again and now I have 84 titles of books on research methodology. You can look at the dates here. If if I want, I would say, OK, maybe this one it's it's more appropriate. Um, just want to log out quickly because I'm logged in. And I click on that particular title and it will say to me, these are the table this is the table of contents and in chapter three of this book there's research methods and approaches to involvement if this is the chapter of a book that i need i would go directly to the publisher's page so you first have to do a search you open the title of a book i read the summary of the book i go through the table of contents and i can find something that i can download then you just go straight to Wiley, the publisher. This is the message that comes through. Can you see that this is a common message? It's not, it's not only appearing on, on you only. It also appears when we also do something. It's, a, it's an ICT challenge. So they say to us they are working on it. So what you can do is to close the page and go back again. And it sometimes wait. Can you see now that it's opening? At first, it doesn't work. That 404 error message, please close the page and go back and redo what you were doing, like I've just done. You just close the page, you go back and you click again, here's the book. So um, on part three, there's a chapter that I'm interested in. And then if I want to, to, to download that chapter, then I just go ahead and there's my PDF. OK. So this is the book that I found on the library's homepage and I'm interested in it. It's got a it's got on part three. There's a chapter on its part. I think it's part one. Number three, there's this chapter that I want. I went through widely. Remember, ebooks are hosted by uh, publishers, I go to this publisher, then I can see this part. There's my. And I've got full access. If you if you see that the key is locked, then you know that we don't have access to that. In most instances, when it's green, it means now I can just go ahead and open the PDF of the book and download this particular chapter from this book. So here's your download option. I can download this, but make sure that you, you cite correctly. You tell your lecturer that this particular chapter comes from this book. Okay. Right back to our browse function. So these are ebooks. Let's say, you know, I'm just nearer a branch. I can walk to the library if the library is open and just grab a book from the shelf. So you change this, you say you want to view the entire collection, you search again, same topic, research methods. There are titles that I'm, I'm interested in. Some of them you will find that this is an, it, it's, not, it's not there. Maybe number two, it's something that I would want, I can just I can see now I can open this whole title because now um,
I just open the whole title and read the summary of the book to see if this is something that is going to help me. This is on management research methods. So these are research methods for management students or business management students, and it says Pretoria Open Collection is available. I can just go ahead and request it. Remember when you now go and request, I told you about this specific uh, instructions. This is where you tell the library whether you, will, you can collect, whether they can put, uh, whether the book, you know, or you don't need the book by the state, and then you submit so that we don't waste your time. If you see that this book doesn't arrive on a certain date, sometimes books are sent to students and the assignment is overdue or it's gone, it's long past. This is how books get lost and you are built for something that you never receive or it's still sitting at the post office somewhere in a country. So rather, Specify here if you have any instructions about this book request. Again, I just wanted to show you from the main library homepage where you can also go and log into your My Library. So this is where when you log into your My Library, it gives you it gives the profile. This is my profile. Unfortunately, I don't have any books issued under my name currently. So if you had a long list of books, this is where you go now and renew those books online. You go to my library, you authenticate yourself, student number, my UNISA, you get all the lists that are issued, all the books that are issued under your name. And then you just tick the boxes and say, I want to renew this one and this one, and then you say OK, and then they are automatically renewed. If you have renewed them more than twice, the system will not allow you to. So it will let you know that no, this one cannot be renewed. It has to come back. And in some instances, it will tell you if a book is on hold. What it means, if it's on hold, it means another client has requested this book. You have to return it so that they can pass it on to somebody else. You will find an, an on hold on your on your on your my library uh, profile so you must know that that book has to return as soon as possible right so this is basically the catalog you can use the catalog from here or you can just go to your own library guide remember you are registered across colleges so these are guides which are alphabetical according to specific subject area. So I'm going to open what we've just looked at, my own one, which is information science. You just go to your own specific subject area. You open, they are all the same. So this is the landing page of all the guides. What I've currently done on my library guide, I've actually I put a, a web document on library services during lockdown. So this is an updated uh, library services guide you can click on it and open there are certain telephone numbers and email addresses that you can use in case you get you know you want to ask anything as far as library opening is concerned and you also have remember we have a, a student booking app for you to go to any of our branches so you have to book first so that they can allow you because of COVID. Uh, issues on all my guides. I have these two documents for 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 the students that I'm helping. Remember, I said to you, uh, the the most of the library links are duplicated in all the guides. So these are all the library uh, links from the previous library page. So you'll find them here. You can go and search the catalog from here. You can search for your e reserves from this page. But if you go to books, what we've done also. Remember I told you, you can also search your catalog from, from this part here. Or you can go and search for ebooks. These are the packages where you'll find contents of ebooks for your specific topic. And I mean, I've shown you now, you can search from the catalog and limit according to ebooks. You can do that from the catalog, uh, which you'll have uh, several 
ebooks linked to our own catalog but these this now you go to a specific publishers page like your EBSCO books you go and search for your topic and see if you know your topic will have any ebooks as far as your topic is concerned and under articles all the guides are the same we've got all the subject uh, databases linked here if you don't have the full text of a, of a journal article. You can use the, the Find e journal portal and just plug in the, the title of a journal. Then the system will tell you whether this particular journal is available in our subscription as a full text or not. Or you can just go and search your, 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 your e results under the course code at the bottom of the list on, your, on, on each of these guides. So if we click here and now I, want, I just want to you see that 404 um, thing is happening. You just ignore and do it again, and then it will open. So there's a there's a there's a little bit of an error message, especially now that most of us are working off campus. This 404 error message comes comes and goes. So don't give up. Just close the page and try to open again. It will it will it will work. Remember, I showed you this page. Um, now I want to show you live how you're going to conduct yourself. So you have arrived here. Before you even put anything else, I want you to go and choose more databases because you cannot search only on this one because this portal, this host, EBSCO, has got all kinds of subject areas. There are people who do the sciences, people who do management, psychology, education, they've got their own titles of, 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 of databases sitting here. So you have to go and engage with this page. Make sure you select according to your own topic. You look at the database and see, and then this at the, this, this, this tab here at the end of each title of a database tells you what this database covers. So if you want to you know, get informed so that you can get used to all these names of databases. You can just check, will this be able to assist? Will this be able to assist? Will this be able to assist? You just click on that and then it just gives you, uh, basically it will tell you what this whole database is all about. So you select as you go along. Um, I've selected two at the top because I want to repeat the same um, topic that I've done. And then I'll select um, psych articles and maybe psych info because we're dealing with COVID, which has all kind of uh, implications. And I'll go and select a uh, business and then I'll select the, hist the, the history behind the whole, um, the whole thing. I'll take humanities, you know, just for interest sake, the social sciences, uh, the med line, you know, because it has to do with an education wise, the economy. Now I've selected a few database and I tell the system I'm fine. What I want the system now to do now, now that I've selected all these databases. No, 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 I'm fine. So I can show all these databases that I've selected by clicking on show all. Now I can go and say, just tell me, you know, I put this in code. I can say COVID-19. Remember in that previous one we said, uh, and it gives you all the options. Do you want COVID vaccine or coronavirus or this or this, depending what you're looking at. So I can say I want COVID-19 in particular, in Africa in particular. I just want to see what's happening in Africa. And then this is the this denotes the keyword search. And I can just go and say, just look at 2021. I'm only interested in these two years and then only one scholarly material, nothing more. And then I search. Remember in the previous one we had 94 and in this one there's 104 articles. 
another limiter that you can use because these are international databases. You also have a, a language uh, thing. So there's one French, uh, the rest is English, so it doesn't make a difference. But if you have a, this huge search, make sure you also limit according to language. So you click on, I'm only reading English, and then it updates your list. So it drops that French article out of our list. But uh, my COVID-19, it's search as a keyword and 103, it's too many articles to go through. I don't have time. I just need a sort of, you know, a limited number of articles so that I can start working. I'm, I don't have time to, to get, you know, to engage myself with all of this. You can go here and say to the system, just give me this phrase in the title of all the articles that I want. And then you search again. It now drops all the other ones because now your COVID-19 in Africa was appearing in the subject of your article, was appearing in your abstract and also in the title. So now I get more hit. It's only appearing in the title. So you'll see here my search COVID-19 in Africa, it's appearing in the title and it's ranked according to relevancy. And you just leave it at that. Don't go and say you want the, the latest first because most of the database actually rank their searches according to the, the top one are the most relevant ones. What I can do here, I can just go to my page option and tell the system, you know, just give me the first 50 then I'm, I'm fine and then you apply. You select your first 50, then you can browse through the first 50. And you start now engaging with these articles. This is your hour class. I can just say, you know, remember I told you that this is a summary, what the abstract is all about, but it's, it's you know, it doesn't tell you more. If you're not satisfied with this, you can just open this and then you just read the entire abstract. You see how, how long the abstract is here. Then it gives you the sense whether this particular article will be able to, to, to address your research question. You read the abstract by clicking on this hourglass here. Then when you're satisfied with this, you have a folder here, which is like an envelope. And when you click here, it says your folder is empty. So if you want to put things in this folder, you have to start using these uh, plus signs. So I will select this number one, and then now my folder has items. It's got this one item, and then I will go with number two. Uh, I will not, you know, remember, and in, in, in most instances, you will be interested in something that is full. You don't want to go still and search for something unless the article is so good that it doesn't come with a PDF document, you will take it. So most students will prefer full text articles. It, make it, it makes it easy for you to, to download them as you wish because here there's no limit. It's not like in eBooks. So you can take as many articles as you want. And most of the students will go for, for full articles. So I will just, maybe take uh, the first five and then you go down and some of them like this one it's a, it's a it's a fairly recent article it's not available anywhere online so you just scroll down you see there's some that you know refer you to another database that has a full text EBSCO doesn't have doesn't provide a full text for you something like this you can also take it will refer you somewhere where you'll find a another 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 full text article so you can just take as many as you you wish at the bottom of the list out of your your 50 you will see you have the second page so you've got your your first 50 and then you can move to the next page okay so you go back to your top page you are satisfied with what is is displayed here You've read the abstract, you've looked at the summary of the abstract, or you've looked at the full abstract, you're satisfied with your list. What you then do, you can either go folder view, or you can just open this folder at the top there. So now I've got these six articles. I know if I look at these articles, I'll be able to finish my research uh, report. I just, you know, email because most people don't, don't print anymore. 
My preference is to uh, deselect these because I know these articles will come with links to full text. And then I just call them articles. If I'm doing this for somebody else, I'll say articles for Professor Makua or for or Dr. Sorenso or Professor Ngulube. And then I know these are articles that I need to forward to, to Professor Ngulube. Then I just click on send. And then the system will confirm that your email has been sent. Then I continue. When I continue here, I can now go and do another search, but you first have to deselect all of this and then you have to delete them and you confirm. No, I'm done with COVID-19. I'm happy. I'm going to delete this and I'm going back to my search prompt. So now I'm back here. So when I arrive at the search, I can just say clear this whole search because now I want to look at research methodology books. Search methods. So when you start typing, it tells you that you can look at all these variants. You want research methods, step-by-step -step guide for beginners. Is this what you're interested in? Remember your scholarly should always be there. You can just, you know, delete all of this because then now it will be too limiting. So you just look for scholarly peer review items and you, watch, you want to look at uh, any, any articles on research methodology, a step-by-step -step guide, see what there is. So this is too specific. Or you can just re do research methodology in education. This is too broad and it's a keyword search. So I can say I'm looking for research methods. But in this, I want research and methods in one space next to one another. But I want it in, let's say, in politics. Or political. Can you see that when you start typing, the system actually guides you that you can use politics or political then I do my search. And also this will also depend on the selection of my databases. Remember I did COVID and I selected all the like your health stuff databases. So you can, when you see you're not getting uh, enough results, you go back to your search, um, choose databases and deselect things that you think will not cover politics, like your psych stuff and business is not part of political science. And you have a database in politics, there it is. It's a social science, it's not in medicine, and then you continue. Then you'll have, um, you know, refined, refined results. And I tell the system, I want scholarly, I still want this, and then I, I continue and search. So you, you, you have to uh, learn how to, to use this and seeing that there's, there's lots, it's more than 13,000, it's, it's too much. At your level, it's, it's, it's too big. So what I can do, I can just say in political science, as a subject, as a, as, a, as, a, as a subject, and also want these words together. You start with a keyword when you see that your results are too big and then you, you say, you tell the system, rather give me research methods or, or I can say methodology or research methodology. and then you search. At least there's 3,000. Now I can tell the system I need these words in the title of my article. And then political science can appear anywhere. It can be a subject, uh, it can appear in the subject or in an abstract. There you are. I'm left with 93. I can browse through the first 50 and then select them, look at the abstract and uh, select them and the dates. If I think this is too much, I can tell the system, no, no, no. 
just give me from to maybe 2010. And then it just reverses the whole um, results. So I've got 37. At your level, 37 is enough. So I'm looking at uh, research methods or methodology in political science as a subject. It can be education, psychology, or whatever subject area. It can be history, it can be communication science, it can be English studies. And I, I, I change my dates from this year to this year. And I'm telling the system, just give me only scholarly material. And then you can even say, you know, I don't, and I'm not interested in any of these languages. I just want to, to look at the English ones. And then it gives you the 34. And this is a manageable list that you can go through. And you can see most of these are available in PDF formats. And what I can advise you, if something appears like this, you have to take the PDF because this is the real, it, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the article itself. It's not like a, a, a copied version. Here you won't find the HTML doesn't have page numbers. So with a PDF, you will have page numbers. If you have to cite from page five, you are able to indicate that this particular code comes from this particular article on page five. So you always have to go for the ones with PDF. Right, um, I think that's we've exhausted the, the EBSCO search. What I actually also wanted to uh, show you is this research support tab, which will we'll look at it um, uh, sort of um, in its entirety when we, we repeat these, these, these trainings. Remember I told you that in some subject areas you will find that librarians have put books. If you click on, on any of these books, they take you directly to, to the catalog. So, um, so this is the, the, the book from the research support uh, page. And unfortunately, this is a print book which you have to request if you are interested in it, if you are an information science student. And in some instances on this research support uh, page, some of these books will obviously be, be, be online. But they, there's, 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 there's things that you can start looking at while you are on your, on your, on your own uh, subject area pages, library guides. We've got academic writing uh, book titles. It's, a, it's an alert, it's a, it's, a, it's a set search that we've placed there and we're putting all books that we know they will help our students on academic writing. Some of them are print, but there's a lot also on ebooks. So you can just look at these and you can just say, change this to only ebooks. I'm only interested in ebooks because I don't have time to request some of these titles. And then it just searches according to ebooks on academic writing. So all of these 64 titles are books on academic writing. Can you see they are all online? It's electronic books. You, you recognize them by this. So you can go to your research support page and search and search on any of this or your books on writing your research proposal. You can search on the books on your writing proposal. You get a lot of it's 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 mingled with uh, our print and E and some of them are thesis. And then you can just say, I'm interested only in eBooks. I don't have time to request. And the system will change this whole 100 and, I mean, 1,300 list to eBooks. So now you have only 345. You just go and engage with the titles of these books. It gives you, uh, it tells you these are the most uh, relevant entries, one, two, three, but you can just scroll down and open the title of the book and see if there are chapters in this book that will also help you with your, with your, with your, with your, um, how you have to write your proposal. So you can change this and you find them all under the research support tab. We have all these extra links that we've put here besides all the other books that we have under, under each, uh, each of, each of the, 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 the library guides. So this tab is actually very interesting and there's also uh, a very nice database which I'm, go I'm going to include it um, when we, we do our, our, our next thing. Uh, it's called the research methods uh, 
sage research methods online. If you're not sure about methodologies, SAGE will provide you with a map of methodologies where you can see, oh, I can see when they speak about qualitative research or quantitative research, this is what qualitative research is all about. This is what quantitative research is all about. So we'll cover that in the next thing. And finally, we'll also cover referencing in our next uh, session where I will uh, speak to how now you've, you've, you've exported all these um, articles, references, and now you can put them on an online system. You can create your own website of references by using what we call Mendeley, which is your reference management tool where you can put all your references, be it books, articles, reviews, all your references in one space. And it will help you when you do your in-text citation. You can, uh, when you write a chapter or your research paper, you can cite as you go along using your Mendeley. And I think this is where I'm going to end. Thank you very much for, for, for your coming and I will wait for questions.